This is the hater's guide to Ryobi tools. Listen, I know a lot of you walk into Home Depot, you're walking down the aisle, you see the Ryobi tool display and you turn your nose up as you walk by. Some of you, even when you're walking by, accidentally get too close and skirt away as fast as possible, scared you're gonna catch Ryobi cooties. I know your Milwaukee batteries wouldn't be caught dead near a Ryobi tool. Listen, they're not that bad. Let me tell you about it. Before we get started, you should know that I am not sponsored by Ryobi or anybody else in this video. I purchased every single one of these tools myself with my own money from Home Depot. So these are my thoughts. So I put a poll out on my YouTube community tab and asked which brand of power tools was your least favorite or the most hated. Ryobi come out on top with like 38% of the vote. Festool with a close second, but I really thought Festool would win out just because of their price. But for some reason there was an unnatural hatred for Ryobi in my opinion. I've never used their tools until I purchased this set and I thought, I gotta do some digging on where they come from and why this hatred exists. So I went way back to the beginning to find out where Ryobi started. They started in Japan in 1943 as a die cast component company. Then they evolved over time, bringing their very first power tool, which was a drill in 1968. Not this drill, but a regular corded 1968 model. Of course, over time they evolved and now have what you see today. In August of 2000, they were actually acquired by a company called TTI. And if you don't know, TTI actually owns Milwaukee, Rigid, Hart, and several other power tool brands. Why is that important? Well, it's important because being backed by a larger corporation, I think gives them a little bit of an advantage over some of the other tool companies that are out there. There's an article in Forbes called The Business of Power Tools from way back in 2016, but I think it's still relevant. And in that article, it stated TTI launches 300 new products every single year. And it only takes them about six months to develop and launch a new tool where other tool companies take up to 18 months for that same process. I think that puts them ahead when they think of something new, they can get it out faster. What I found interesting though about TTI is a lot of times when you have a holding company like that, they control all the companies under them, where this is a little different because Milwaukee, Rigid, Ryobi, all of those have their own individual product development teams, their own engineering teams, their own sales teams. So it's basically operating as an independent company, even though it's held by a larger company. And Ryobi has a North America division in Anderson, South Carolina. And if you've ever seen this place, it's quite impressive. They have a garage set up inside there so they can see how their tools will be laid out in the garage. They can 3D print these type things just to kind of get an idea before they send them off to be manufactured. It's very impressive, the setup that they have there. I think the number one thing that sets Ryobi apart from most other tool brands is the price. These are extremely reasonably priced for most people. People who just wanna do some DIY projects around the house or a beginner woodworker. I purchased this entire set for $400 and then I added the Ryobi router. That's extremely good price for everything I would need to do beginner woodworking projects. I've got a drill, I've got a driver, I've got a sander, I've got a jigsaw, a circular saw, and a couple of other saws that I could basically build almost anything that I wanted to with just this set, especially starting out as a beginner. If you look at similar combo kits like this from Milwaukee, Rigid, DeWalt, you're gonna be spending several hundred dollars more. And I think that's what attracts most people. The price. The next thing that I think attracts a lot of people to Ryobi is the fact that they have so many tools. Just in the 18 volt one plus platform, they have over 260 products that you can use the same battery for. That in and of itself will attract a lot of people because if you're the average homeowner and you go into Home Depot and you pick up a drill and driver, you could also use the same thing on a string trimmer or a leaf blower. Like that's super powerful to have that much stuff under one uh, tool brand or one battery platform. And that interoperability, that's a big word for a redneck, of this battery system is what a lot of people are gonna buy into. Just is. In the power tool world, uh, Ryobi is actually known for making some innovative products and have, have actually received a lot of design and innovation awards over the years for their products. I did not know that, thought it was impressive. Ryobi has received the Red Dot Design Award, several of those actually. They've also received a Good Design Award, the IF Design Award, the IF Product Design Award, the CES Innovation Award, just to name a few. Another thing that attracts people to various brands of power tools is warranty. These have a three year limited warranty, limited meaning free from defects, things like that. I mean, if you run over the truck, they're not gonna warranty it, but just like any other tool brand, this is very compatible with the DeWalt warranty. It's also kind of similar to the Milwaukee. While Milwaukee has a five-year warranty on their tools, 
they have a three-year warranty on a lot of their batteries. So Ryobi's competing in that area. Another huge reason that people choose Ryobi, availability of tools. They have so many, like we talked about before. If you live close to a Home Depot, relatively close, and something comes up, you got a project you wanna get done, and you need a drill, or you need a sander, or even a jigsaw, you can literally walk into any Home Depot. It's gonna be available to you immediately. In other words, you don't have to wait on it to be shipped but you can have them shipped too. But I think that's what sells most homeowners slash DIYers on Ryobi is just because you can just run in and grab it. And again, when you run in and grab it, you're paying a very reasonable price for these tools because they're just not expensive. Another great reason that a lot of people choose Ryobi is the fact that this battery right here that I just bought in, 20, in late 2022 will fit any tool that they made dating back to 1996. And vice versa, if you still have a battery that actually works from 1996, it will plug into this impact driver just like that one did. That's huge for a lot of people because that tells everybody that's buying this set of tools, these batteries have been around for so long, they've invested so much in that battery connectivity compatibility that it's not going anywhere anytime soon where some other tool companies have swapped over the years their types of connections and things like that, especially as battery technology has in, improved or innovated. So why do people hate Ryobi tools so much or have so much dislike for them uh, for a lighter word than hate? I think a lot of it has to do with you picking the wrong tool for the wrong job in a lot of cases. I know in the comments of that poll, a lot of people cited durability as one of the reasons why they didn't like Ryobi. And also I think a lot of it came from years past before Ryobi started kind of improving their brand and or tool quality. A lot of their older tools were a little bit lesser quality in my opinion, but now these are on par with the rigids that I have. I, they're nice. With that said, I think a lot of people, if you're working a construction type job, that these are gonna be dropped and banged around and used by a bunch of different people who absolutely do not respect your tools because I've worked on job sites before. They, people just, if it's not theirs, they're not gonna treat it like it's theirs. These tools probably won't hold up as well as some of the upper brands, Milwaukee and things like that, Makita, those that are meant to go on job sites. These are meant for beginners and homeowners doing um, occasional projects. Now, while they will last for people who use them a lot, a lot of times if you start abusing them in a way that they're not supposed to be or not meant to be made or used, a lot of times then you're gonna start seeing tools break down. It really doesn't matter what brand it is. But in my opinion, these aren't made for that reason. However, if you're a beginner woodworker who's only working on projects on the weekend, or if you're a homeowner looking for DIY tools just around the house to do the honey-do list, these will be just fine for years to come. You will not have any problem with them. And if you do, they've got a three-year warranty. I think one of the reasons Ryobi is popular too is they have a strong marketing team. Again, they have not sponsored this. They don't know my name, but they sponsor a lot of other channels that I've seen as well as those DIY network type shows where people are building things in their home. You'll see these Ryobi tools used all the time. Those don't get there by accident. What that does is put this brand front and center in the mind of the homeowner when they go to Home Depot, they see it, they're like, oh, Joe used it on such and such show, it's gotta be great. So they'll pick them up. I picked this set up for 400 bucks plus the router was another, I think 60, $70. Uh, so all in, I'm less than $500 for all of this. However, if I was going to be using these a lot, then I would actually have went with the brushless models. And what that means is these are all brushed motors and they just are not as efficient as a brushless motor. So Ryobi has a line of brushless tools. You can pick those up. You're gonna pay a little bit more for those, but those are gonna run more efficient. In other words, your batteries are gonna last longer and they're gonna generate more power. In other words, your saws, your drills, things like that are just gonna have more power just because of the brushless motor. So if I'm giving you buying advice on a Ryobi system, I would absolutely steer toward the brushless motors if you're gonna be using them a lot. If you're the occasional DIYer or beginner woodworker, on a budget, these will be perfectly fine. You're gonna get a sander and all this stuff. I'll drop a link to this set that I bought if you're interested in checking those out. In the shop here, I have Milwaukee Rigid and Ryobi and they all just happen to be on my TTI, but they all have their own strengths and weaknesses, I think. I'm gonna give you a quick comparison of some of their tools just to kind of show you how Ryobi stands up against them. So the Milwaukee, this is a 12 volt driver, but kind of similar to the impacts, quarter inch impact. 
and it's lighter weight. That's why I went with the 12-volt system. But for the most part, you can see there's LEDs here. There's also uh, variable speeds here. That's one of the things I like about that driver. Whereas on the Ryobi, the light is down here. I don't really care for the light being there, but the driver itself is just fine. It's just not a variable speed like the Milwaukee or even the Rigid. Rigid has three speeds and the lights are up here. That makes a big difference because when the lights are mounted around the chuck area, it makes it easier to see, especially when you're working in tight areas. As far as the drills go, man, they're very similar. Really, they are. I mean, the Rigid and Ryobi, this Rigid's a few years old, so it's a little bit bigger, but there is so little difference in those two drills. Uh, there's just, it's not really a whole lot to say about them. They both have uh, settings one and two for slower and faster drill speeds. They both have the adjustable chuck so that you can adjust the uh, how much torque you're putting on your drill bits or your or your screws there's just really not a whole lot of difference in drills for the most part just for regular everyday use the milwaukee is a 12 volt one it also has the one and two it also has the chuck it feels a little better in the hand but it is a 12 volt and it's lighter so it's really not a comparison there as far as oscillating tools go i have the rigid and the ryobi these things are so handy to have in the shop if you don't have one you'll use them a lot I actually prefer the Ryobi brand one. It's lighter weight than this uh, Rigid, and it's a soft start and it's a trigger pull. Whereas the Rigid is just a switch and it vibrates a ton more than this one. I think this one's more ergonomic. It just feels better made to me. And the last comparison is a router. I've got three different routers here from each of the brands. My personal preference is the Milwaukee one. But this Ryobi, fairly nice. The only thing I don't like about it is how top heavy it is with this battery on there. The way it's made, it has that giant, whatever that is, coming off of that. And it just, it is really heavy on that end. Where the Rigid and the Milwaukee both have uh, similar profiles all the way down and it makes them more balanced. Now I got, this is an older model. They have a newer model out that's variable speed, but was sold out when I bought this one. So that's why I got this one. But for the most part, it does what a router is supposed to do. It's just a little more awkward to hold. But as far as features, adjustability, they're very, very similar, all three of them. And one of the reasons I went ahead and bought the Milwaukee router is because my rigid router keeps doing this. Smoky. So it's literally just caught on fire on camera. Check that out. So we're fixing to see if the uh, lifetime service agreement works on this thing. Like it's legit on fire. Good night. Can't believe I caught that on camera. <laughs> what I was trying to show you was when I turned this on, it would only run for a second or two. And then when I turn it, you know, I have to turn it off back on. It's been doing that for a while. I thought it was an overload switch, but apparently something burned up. So a big question that a lot of consumers have is why should I spend more on Milwaukee or uh, DeWalt or anything like that when you can buy these Ryobi tools? Well, you have to understand you're going to give up some certain features as well as some durability for the most part on the budget minded tools like Ryobi where the Milwaukee and things like that will have a little bit better features. A big fat, for instance, the Milwaukee router has two LEDs in there where the Ryobi rigid have one. And that's not a huge deal, but it does give it a little better sight. Uh, variable speed on this router versus the cheaper uh, Ryobi router that I have here. A little things like that will help your overall experience with the tool and have it just be more convenient for you. Uh, whether that's worth it to you or not is absolutely a personal decision. Do I think the hate or dislike of Ryobi is justified? Absolutely not. I think it's kind of silly for somebody to dislike a tool company if you, especially if you've never used them. Now, if you've had a bad experience, that's a little different. I'd like to know your thoughts on Ryobi. Let me know in the comments below. Love, hate, dislike, don't care. Let me know in the comments. One thing you will give up as far as price goes when you're getting budget tools things is the size of these tools. Like this saw here is a five and a half inch saw, which is very small for a blade. You're gonna cut through a two before and not much more as far as the thickness goes. So you're gonna give up that when you look at other kits available from DeWalt Milwaukee, their saws are a little bit bigger, sometimes even full size seven and a quarter saws. I will say this about Ryobi though. What I've noticed immediately is when you put them in your hands, they're very ergonomically made. In other words, they fit well in your hand. Everything from this circular saw to the sander, drills, drivers, router, everything, well, the router's not. Scratch the router. Everything else is well made. The router is just too top heavy. I don't care for it. Everything else, even the little flashlight, it's a nice feel in your hand. 
Now, it's not all sunshine and green rainbows here. I think there's a few tools from Ryobi that I personally would avoid. You can let me know in the comments if you agree or not. Number one is the table saw. No, I haven't used it, but I have used one similar to this that had a fence just like this. And these fences are notorious for not being able to stay square to the blade or to the slot. And they're very difficult to move and, and with any accuracy or speed. I hate this fence, literally. And I've had a lot of people tell me that to avoid the Ryobi table saw in comments, emails, and things like that when I'm asking around. You use your own judgment. I personally think this $300-ish DeWalt saw is a much better option for you if you're wanting to look for a budget saw that's got a very nice fence and is plenty powerful to do what you need it to do. The second Ryobi tool up personally wouldn't buy is their miter saw. Now, some people may be happy with this saw, but personally, I think for the price point where this is at, you could get a much better quality saw, such as the DeWalt or other models that are in the similar price range and is gonna give you better features and an all around better saw, again, in my opinion. All right, now that you've been educated on Ryobi, did I change your mind at all? Do you still dislike them or do you think you might consider them in the future if you needed one of these tools? Let me know. If you'd like to see me build something with all these Ryobi tools and only Ryobi tools, nothing else, let me know in the comments what you would like to see. I'll pick out the best one, build it with these. Has to be reasonable though. If you like this video, you'll love the Hater's Guide to Harbor Freight. You gotta check it out. Click that box, go watch it. Click in the box, get you the big old virtual fist bump. Also another one of my favorite videos right there.